Good afternoon, Stetson University. It's great to, to uh, be with you today. Uh, we've been doing these on a weekly or bi-weekly basis, and I, I think they've proven to be quite useful to keep our community informed as we all uh, traverse a once in a century set of challenges here in higher education, and certainly at Stetson University specifically. Uh, I, I wish you a good afternoon. We have a very full uh, session today. Let me extend a special welcome, not only to our panelists, uh, but also to uh, some Stetson parents that might be out there, as well as some students that are gonna be joining our community uh, this fall. Welcome to Hatter Nation, and uh, we will try our very best to answer any questions you might have. And we are so eager, and I really mean that sincerely, so eager to have you join us as a community uh, as you join our community in the fall. So welcome to all of you. We will try our best to answer any and all questions you might have. Many of you submitted questions in advance. Please do take advantage of the chat feature and submit your questions while our panelists are speaking. And we will reserve the last 20, 25 minutes or so for uh, questions and answers, which I think is oftentimes uh, the most helpful part of these webinars, uh, which we now call Rolks Report Live. Uh, Rolks is my nickname. Uh, I've had it since I was a little kid. Uh, and we do have a, a Rolks report that comes out uh, electronically, but we've decided to call this the Rolks Report Live. So I hope you enjoy it. And I hope most more importantly, that it's useful to you in some way. If I may now turn to my uh, colleague, uh, Noel Painter, uh, who is going to talk to us a bit about the fall 21 plans. Thank you, President Rolke. And I echo uh, the president's sentiments in welcoming everybody who's part of this webinar, whether you're students, staff, faculty, prospective student, parent, friend. Uh, this is a good chance for the community to come together uh, throughout an, an unusual circumstance and, and remain bonded as we all plan together forward. Uh, I want to speak a for a few minutes about our planning for fall 2021. I think the institution has done an exceptional job of planning well in advance for each of the stages of the pandemic that we've moved through since last, fe uh, last February in 2020. And I do believe that we have a very solid plan for fall 2021 uh, that's receiving good traction around campus. Um, and that's gonna put us in a very good position to meet the needs of our students, uh, to address the concerns of, of our community, keep us safe, but also meet the mission of the institution. Uh, right now, the institution, uh, Stetson, will be largely face-to-face -face in fall of 2021. I've had some questions as to whether or not there will be any online classes, and the fact is there will be some online classes. There may be as much as 10% of our classes that are that are online, and we need to have some of that flexibility in there for students and staff and faculty who qualify for a medical exemption. But we are limiting those, uh, those exceptional situations to medical exemption. There will be, there is in some cases right now, a, pro a process that's already established and there will be more communication about that process. What we firmly know is that learning happens in a Stetson way, in the most powerful way for our students when we can be face to face. And so right now we're focusing on really two situations for hybrid and learning opportunities, hybrid and online learning opportunities. And those are cases where we do have a need because of medical exemption. And in other cases, we do have some classes that are being proposed as online with the assumption, uh, the actual approval based on the outcomes of that class being improved because the class is being offered in a hybrid or online format. We recognize that we've learned a lot in this period. And so we're gonna take what we've learned to make our learning experience better. But in short, we will, we will be largely back to in-person, in-class learning. We'll, we'll be still wearing masks. We'll still be cleaning classrooms very, very well. Uh, we'll be back in, uh, we expect to be in three foot distances in class, which will largely be back to the same size a number of people in the classroom that we had prior to the pandemic and we believe that we can do so aligned with CDC guidance and in a way that's safe for our community. Uh, additionally, we've had uh, a working group, the Academic Affairs Committee of the Faculty Senate, who has been working with constituents around the university to examine our academic calendar and we have confirmed that our academic calendar will be as it was uh, before the pandemic. We will still have a fall break. We will still have a Thanksgiving break. We will still come back to campus for in-person learning and exams after Thanksgiving. 
And so uh, to address a little bit of normalcy, we're happy to have that. And we realize that the demands on our students and our staff and our faculty for the compressed schedule that has been necessary because of the pandemic is something, you know, we're looking forward to having the chance to breathe, to break a little bit more in the middle of the semester, as we know is healthy for learning. And the last thing that I'll say uh, is that we understand too that the world is changing. And so we are projecting right now with the best information that we have, with the best planning we can do for fall 2021, and we'll be ready to change if that change is necessary. If there are great changes in the way that the world is evolving in terms of the pandemic, uh, in terms of the, the metrics that we've been looking at uh, for this entire pandemic, you know, the availability of rooms in hospitals, the percentage of COVID positive tests, our ability to manage uh, uh, student isolation, those kinds of things are important to us. And right now we feel confident about our planning for a largely in-person fall 2021 as those uh, will follow those metrics at specific points throughout the summer. And if we need to make chance, changes in order to be responsive to our primary concern of safety, we'll do exactly that. There's one group of students that I need to address specifically, and that's international students. We recognize that uh, international students face more uncertainty and challenges uh, than most. And so right now we commit ourselves to communicating with you through this as we understand your availability to travel, your availability to take in-person and online education, and address the specific challenges that you face. Thank you very much. President Rolke. Provost Painter, thank you so much. And a huge thanks to you, uh, the deans, and all, certainly our faculty who have worked heroically during this time uh, to try to provide the very best form of Stetson education uh, during a very challenging period. So thank you so very much for that. Uh, Provost Painter will be rejoining us later uh, with some additional information, but I wanna thank him for that. I'd like to now turn to our colleagues, Bonisha and Larry who are gonna to talk to us about campus vibrancy and housing. Perhaps you could, since we do have some guests on the line that have not yet joined the community, perhaps you could just introduce yourselves briefly and then get into the information giving. Thank you. Thank you, President Rolke. Uh, I'm Dr. Larry Correll Hughes. I'm the uh, Assistant Vice President for Campus Life and Student Success, as well as Executive Director for Residential Living and Learning. And I am Benicia Townsend Porter. I'm the Director for Student Development and Campus Vibrancy on Stetson's campus. So we're going to talk to you for a couple of minutes, just give you a, a quick glimpse at um, li what life living on campus as well as um, being a student uh, here uh, will hopefully look like in the fall. Things we're planning for the uh, in looking ahead. Um, so first, from a housing perspective, so residential living and learning, um, we worked with the Safer Stetson Task Force uh, to evaluate um, what the next fall could look like. And um, we have made the decision to uh, move forward with returning to shared bedroom occupancy across our campus. So where it's designed for there to be two people in a room, um, that that will be the case in the fall. Uh, instead of all individuals across campus. Additionally, the three-year residency requirement of the university uh, will be back into place. And so um, in thinking about, you know, how did we come to this uh, decision? And so that's uh, something that a few people have asked. And so it's based on a number of factors. Uh, one is vaccine availability, which has been growing in um, our confidence level that uh, that availability um, as uh, President Rolke uh, mentioned, uh, Governor DeSantis said that, you know, uh, those 18 and older will be able to get the vaccine in Florida beginning next, as soon as uh, the next week or so. Uh, our mitigation efforts. Uh, so we actually have already installed air purifiers in every shared bedroom uh, on campus, uh, in addition to the UV light filtration systems that were in our air handlers already. Um, the evolving understanding of COVID, what we know about COVID and how students interact in the college, the collegiate environment is different than it was a year ago um, or last July. Um, additionally, our experience with isolation tracing and our tiers policy system, um, we, we have much more confidence in those things um, as mitigants and, and how students behave on, on our campus and with, a, with one another, how you behave. Um, and, and really the community ownership in keeping our community safe um, has been impressive 
very impressive. Um, so we, as Provost Painter uh, mentioned, uh, we have set some dates to just kind of reassess and make sure we're still on the uh, path for that safe, uh, vibrant environment in the fall. And so we're going to reassess that uh, at the beginning of April, which is next week. Uh, and so things look very positive to continue with this plan, as well as the beginning of June and July, so that we know kind of some checkpoints. Um, so for the first time uh, this year, we really, we prioritize the ability to live on campus, which was really difficult. Um, it was done uh, very fast, but with thoughts of uh, fairness and equity to our students and um, differing uh, demands. And we worked to get as many students as possible on campus, even you know, renting hotel rooms uh, nearby for students to be able to be in town and on campus um, because we value uh, you uh, having the on-campus experience as much as possible. Um, so we have been exploring uh, for a while uh, our assignments philosophy um, here at Stetson and, and listening to student feedback assessment. Um, and there are some aspects of it that have historically felt inequitable and uh, very difficult for a lot of our students. And so we worked with our student government association, so the diversity and inclusion committee, the campus life committee, the executive committee, and Senate as a whole um, to create as fair and equitable a process as possible um, that lives into um, our values as well as um, you know, make sense of our three-year university residency requirement in relation to our assignments processes. And so um, we made a change so that um, students who are required to live on campus um, are um, prioritized in the housing self-selection process. Now, this isn't to live on campus. Um, we're not saying people, uh, people who aren't prioritized can't live on campus. This is to select your own bed uh, in April. So uh, for the first time, incoming students will actually be able, if, you, if you're an incoming student and you have already deposited, and, or you do that by April 1st and you fill out your housing application by April 1st, you'll be able to self-select your own bed um, in uh, mid to late April, uh, which is really exciting, pretty unprecedented, um, and is a really um, unique opportunity here at Stetson. Um, if you are a continuing student and you are required to live on campus, so you have entered Stetson within the last three years, um, you'll be able to go online and self-select. You should already uh, know where you're at in that process. Uh, but I do wanna just say that we define that as broadly as possible. So students who have uh, excelled academically, who've taken summer school courses or came in with extra credit aren't penalized because of that. Um, we have included as many seniors as we possibly could initially, uh, and if we're able to include more in that self-selection process, we will. Um, but just a reminder that students involved in the um, uh, students who are interested in living in one of the residential learning programs or fraternity and sorority housing, those aren't self-selection, and so you're able and um, able to live in those. So. Women's Leadership, Living Well, our Community Catalyst House Program, uh, Fraternity and Sorority Housing, our Quiet Living, those are all options available to anyone um, that is a continuing student. So I urge you to look at those options uh, really soon if you can. So all that um, leads us to say that, you know, we expect a much fuller campus in person in the fall. Uh, so campus feels different with 2,000 students living on campus than it does with uh, 1,250 students living on campus. And so there's more just natural vibrancy and energy um, that comes with just people being physically present with one another. Although uh, we have worked really hard this year to create as much vibrancy as we can in the virtual environment. Uh, and so Benicia and her uh, team have worked really hard to do that partnering with student organizations to figure out how to do that. So Benicia, can you talk to uh, everyone a little bit more about kind of where we're going uh, for the fall? Certainly. Uh, I recently read something I think that President Rolk actually wrote, and that was that Stetson University never closed and therefore we never stopped learning. And that is absolutely the truth. Uh, we have not stopped learning on how to stay vibrant 
through an environment that doesn't quite welcome vibrancy, right? Um, and so we've worked side by side with students to create opportunities and to make sure that our students have a social outlet and have a way to connect and engage with one another. And there has been a lot to do. I think there's been a lot of noise that has gotten in the way of knowing exactly what to do. So we have also worked on our marketing efforts to make sure that students know what options that they have. And moving forward, we're just getting better and better and better at doing this. And the students are as well. And as you can see, the students are starting to really engage more you're starting to see more life on campus you're starting to see people interacting more and it's starting to feel a little more normal but we still have to maintain our safety and so within those guidelines we plan to make sure that we still have standing programs uncouth will still happen so students will still be able to enjoy and express their talents and and be able to show off uh, what they can do to their peers and celebrate one another during Uncouth. It's one of our most popular programs and one of our uh, most wanted uh, programs from our students. And so we, we look forward to seeing you there. We also have over a hundred organizations and clubs that students can become a part of. So there is definitely a set of people that every student can connect to if they desire to do so. Those organizations and clubs are already transitioning and ramping up for next year. They're preparing their budgets, they're proposing their calendars, and they are getting ready for the upcoming year. So if you are a new student, start to, to probe. You can email me at bporter at stetson.edu and, and ask, about, ask about an organization or an interest that you may have. And if we don't have it, you can create it. And that's the beauty of it all. If, you, if the people are not already gathered, you can create that pod of people so that you can have your people. But we have so many different options on the campus that it's very rarely that you have to create anything because they're already there and they're creating that vibrancy that we want on the campus. We also have different organizations that are managed by departments like Homecoming, Hatter Productions, SGA, uh, Hatter Network, RA, intramurals, you'll start to see more and more of that type of life just coming alive on the campus as the vaccinations become more and more popular and through the throughout the population of the people on the campus. And as the restrictions start to loosen, you'll start to see more and more vibrancy on the campus. Until then, we will do our very best to create what we can, but we need you. We need all of the students to engage. Vibrancy is about energy. It's about the transaction of energy and for everyone being involved. And so that means all of us getting involved, engaging with one another, embracing one another, and celebrating life and being able to learn from each other and have fun with each other and just have bursting laughs across the campus. And that's what vibrancy is about. And so we invite all of the students to engage with us. We also invite faculty and staff to engage with us. And if you have a great idea of a program or an event that you would love to explore with us, email me bporter at stetson.edu. I'd love to talk to you about it and my team is ready. Thank you, Venetia. You know, one of the things that uh, we're, you and I were just talking about yesterday is how excited we are that late night breakfast will actually be at night. Um, so, you know, the, the pandemic caused us not to have a late night breakfast at all um, for spring 2020 and uh, to have a, a late night brunch um, uh, exactly. in uh, the fall. And so yeah. we're excited to, to have that back. Uh, for those of you who are incoming students, our first year students, late night breakfast is a huge uh, sets and tradition where um, it is a late night breakfast right at the beginning of finals, the typically the night before finals start or during the study day. And uh, students line up. Uh, there are students who have years of t-shirts from every late night breakfast. And so um, we're excited about that and so many other things that are hallmarks of the sets and experience uh, being uh, physically uh, in person uh, at the remainder of this semester and into the fall. 
Right. And I would be remiss to, to not mention that SGA elections are coming up. So if you're interested in those type of student leader positions, then get engaged and get involved and get ready for those elections. And shout out to Hatterthon. They raised $87,000 this year. That's amazing, especially in a COVID year. So uh, there's so many opportunities to get engaged in the way that you want to be engaged. Great. A sincere thanks to both Larry and Benicia for that very helpful information. Uh, they will be rejoining the screen uh, at the tail end of our presentation. Uh, some questions are starting to come in on the chat and they will be very well prepared to answer them uh, related to housing and to campus vibrancy. Before I move on to our next topic, let me just amplify a couple of things that were said. Uh, one is that we had never closed. Uh, it's almost a year ago that Stetson was required to go uh, virtual uh, back last March. Uh, but we have moved the sets in education forward. And the only way that's been possible has been through extraordinary collaboration and care for one another. And uh, we have enjoyed very low positivity rates. Uh, we have uh, really been able to come together as a community to prioritize the things that were most important, most notably health and safety. And Benicia is correct. Uh, this is my first year at Stetson. And what a difference between the fall and the spring in terms of campus vibrancy. Um, you know, we, we live in an extraordinary climate here, so you see a lot of people now outside, again, still wearing masks, still doing the smart things of being physically distant, uh, watching crowd size and the like, uh, but you're starting to see the campus really start to percolate, if you will. Uh, we have had intercollegiate uh, athletic competitions done with very careful restrictions, uh, and so it gives me great hope and, and great excitement, it gives me great excitement uh, to be welcoming students back in the fall. If I could please now turn to my colleagues uh, Mitchell Reddish and Raymond Nault to come onto the screen uh, to talk about financial planning and some summer uh, programming. Thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you, Dr. Rolke. I appreciate the uh, uh, welcome. Uh, my name is Raymond Nault. I, uh, I am the interim vice president of enrollment management. Um, Mitch, did you want to introduce yourself? Sure. I'm Mitchell Reddish. Uh, I'm chair of the Department of Religious Studies, but I'm also the director of Stetson Summer School Programs. Um, we've covered a lot, uh, and we have a lot to celebrate with the fact that we have never closed. Um, uh, I'm hopeful that we have many prospective students on the call, um, but we have many continuing students on the call. And we know that COVID has impacted families in very different ways. Um, so if you're a prospective student and you're still interested in pursuing SEDS and haven't applied, we, our applications are still open. Our admissions recruiters are there to help connect you with faculty members to make sure you understand what program offerings we have. We are actually even tomorrow having a Hatter Day event where students can come to campus and uh, get to see the campus vibrancy in person. Um, and so I welcome anybody who's still interested. Uh, we will have five separate events by school and you can go to our website and uh, register for those events. If you can't attend in person, we do have virtual opportunities for anybody interested in Fall 21 enrollment to, um, to join us virtually, of course. Um, that is just to, to get your foot in the door. We know that many families are impacted by COVID uh, financially, and uh, I certainly encourage you to partner with the uh, financial planning team, who's part of the One Stop here at Stetson, and we'll work through what opportunities are out there to help make sure the costs are mitigated to the uh, capacity that we can. Um, we know that families are impacted in very different ways and the financial planning team is committed to making sure that uh, um, they're there to assist you and provide you with the roadmap for success. Um, if you're unsure of whether or not you can get to them, you can go to the Student Success Collaborative app on your phone and actually um, get an appointment uh, with one of the actual recruiters and uh, financial planning team members to actually get a time there and do a virtual meeting or an in-person meeting um, uh, with availability. So please take advantage of that. And I look forward to anybody who's on this uh, webinar uh, tomorrow if you're coming. Continuing students, uh, we anticipate to have continuing student awards out in the next few weeks. Um, so that way students can start planning for fall 21. Um, if you're interested in summer uh, courses, we do offer financial aid during summer courses, and um, uh, we encourage you to uh, sign up for courses and the financial planning team will make sure you have the avenues to uh, continue on that success that you've had in this last year. We know it's been challenging, 
Um, but Stetson has prided itself in um, finding uh, creative ways to make sure that everybody has a way to be successful. And I think um, what Dr. Reddish will cover is really some of those opportunities during summer for students who are starting in the fall to start a little earlier and get a leg up or continuing students who wanna progress and maybe graduate a little earlier or take an opportunity that they haven't had a chance to in this last year. So um, I'm really happy that uh, we've been able to kind of stretch to uh, meet our students' demands. And parents, if you have questions, don't hesitate. Uh, um, uh, the financial planning team, our recruiters, the people in the student accounts office and the registrar's office are all there to uh, provide you with solutions to some of the questions that you may have. So, Dr. Reddish? Thanks, Rach. Uh, we have a very vibrant uh, summer program at Stetson. Even last year, when we had to switch to everything online and offer all of our summer courses online, we ended up having one of our best summer schools in terms of enrollment that we have had. Students find courses during the summer to be very valuable. Uh, as Ray mentioned, for, for some students, it's a chance to catch up on courses that they have not been able to take during regular semesters, or for students to get ahead uh, in their uh, academic career. Students often find the opportunity to concentrate on only one or two courses at a time to be very beneficial to them, uh, rather than taking a, a full load like they do during the, the regular semesters. Uh, we have uh, this summer about 115 or so courses that we are offering, and we offer courses that fulfill general education requirements that would be appropriate for new students coming in. We offer courses that meet specific major or minor requirements. Uh, we don't necessarily have uh, every course that you would want to take in the summer, but, but we have a very broad spectrum of courses uh, that would uh, help students in, in getting ahead and advancing uh, their academic career. We have four different summer terms. We have two four-week terms, one seven-week term, and one six-week term. The uh, six-week term is a new term that we just started last year. It's what we call session four. Last year we called it our, our special summer session. That session is geared particularly for incoming new students to sets and whether they are new transfer students or new first time in, in uh, college students at, at Stetson. Uh, most of the courses that are in session four are specifically courses that would be appropriate for uh, first year students. Most of our courses in the summer, uh, throughout the whole summer with each of the sessions, most of them are online courses. Probably 85 to 90% of our courses are online, but we do have some courses that are on campus courses in the summer and some that are hybrid in which the, the students will meet in class part of the time and part of the, the uh, time they will, will meet online. Uh, the exception is session four, which is all online. It is designed uh, particularly uh, that way. Um, in addition to uh, these special uh, re or regular summer school courses, we're also offering what we're calling summer engagement experiences. Uh, these are designed specifically for incoming students to help them get adjusted uh, to Stetson. Uh, there's no cost for these other than a small registration fee for each course. It's a $25 registration fee, uh, but we are offering uh, around 20 to 25 summer engagement experiences uh, that in, uh, are intended to help students uh, be successful at Stetson. Some of them are intended to help students be successful once they leave Stetson in terms of, of uh, helping them learn how to be successful in their career. And then there are some that are also discipline specific to help introduce students to uh, particular disciplines at, at Stetson. Uh, students can register for those summer engagement experiences uh, up until June the 1st. Uh, registration for a regular summer school is done online for students who are new to Stetson. They need to, to work through the admissions office uh, to get set up for that. Students who are current Stetson students would register online the same way that they register for uh, a regular fall and spring semester courses. I hope you join us for summer school. It's a, 
uh, very important aspect of, of education that we do at Stetson. Uh, students find it to be uh, a very helpful part of their career here at Stetson. So there's a few questions that came through the chat. One of them is uh, how Bright Futures works as a private organization. So Stetson does receive uh, Bright Futures. We qualify for the gold seal, the medallion, and the academic scholarship. Those are all established by the state. Um, they pay per credit. Um, it's roughly $203 per credit for the um, uh, academic and about 101 for the medallion. Um, those are rough estimates. The amounts are certainly on our, our website. Um, uh, students certainly have to qualify. They have to complete meet state requirements for SAT, ACT, um, community service hours. Those are all set by the state legislature. Um, and we know that students have struggled this year being able to take the co uh, um, SAT and ACT tests. I know there was recently a just one here in Florida, the um, tests were on Wednesday this past week. So there still are opportunities to take the SAT test and, um, and qualify and so forth. If you don't see it on your financial aid award as a prospective student, first time student, please let us know. And we will certainly check with the state database to see if you qualify. Um, but you can use those funds to help defray your expenses during the fall and spring semester. Um, continuing students, you'll know if you qualify right in your financial aid award, you must maintain your eligibility. That means maintain the GPA associated with whatever program you qualify for and complete um, at least 24 credits academically uh, fall and spring. There's one exception as a first time student, you can use summer to capture some courses. So if this year um, you have fallen behind because of COVID, um, and remote courses and you need to catch up and get to 24 credits, you can do it with this summer semester. Um, so there are opportunities for you to certainly um, uh, explore ways to maximize as much financial aid that you can receive as possible. Um, there is a second question about what's the benefit of summer and that depends. You know, there are a lot of students who are eager um, and they wanna get a leg up on um, course opportunities. So continuing students wanna progress and continue earlier students who are um, want to pursue a different major and want to try something new try an opportunity that's outside their major and they want to take that course they can certainly pursue those opportunities prospective students you want to know what campus life is like even though it's remote in summer four you have an opportunity to get your feet wet and to know what a college course feels like looks like so when you start in the fall you already have the experience to be successful and know how to navigate the adv advising process through the entire um, semester. So there are different ways in which that summer can benefit you. Um, costs are online, um, but you can receive financial aid for the summer courses. Um, you can qualify for a less than half time Pell Grant if you're Pell eligible. You can qualify for student loans. You can qualify for other types of assistance during summer. And the financial planning team can help you do that. So if you have questions, I would certainly encourage you to connect with them. Send me an email. I will connect you with the right people and make sure you have the answers to be successful no matter when you start. So thank you, um, Dr. Roki. Ray and Mitchell, thank you so much. Very helpful information. And I think it's a good example that those students at Stetson that dive in, so to speak, they dive into the things we have to offer are often those students that are able to capitalize most effectively on a Stetson education. So I thank you for those uh, reviewing those opportunities uh, with our audience and with all of us. So thank you. Uh, I'm also pleased to report that in December, we were able to celebrate six commencements on the DeLand campus and three commencements at the College of Law. And we are gearing up again for in-person commencement this May. So I'd like to turn, if I could, to two very important people with regard to not only that, but also award uh, ceremonies. And that will be Noel Painter and Julie Hunter. So thank you for rejoining us on the screen. Absolutely. I feel like we needed a baton to pass between each of us on all of these handoffs. So high five, boom. All right. This is a this is an exciting thing for us to be able to plan to be together to celebrate the accomplishments of our graduates. And I'm I'm pleased that we were able to do that in December and extraordinarily pleased that we're, we're going to be able to do it uh, in, in a large way in uh, in April and May. So this is uh, this is a little additional information on how that's shaping up. We do have celebrations of graduation in a whole lot of different fashions that uh, begin in the week of May the 3rd and then really culminate 
that next weekend and four graduation ceremonies, one for our graduate students in the land, uh, three uh, three ceremonies for our undergraduate students in the land. Uh, the week before, we will have done four graduate ceremonies for our College of Law. So uh, Stetson is embracing this as an important thing for students, parents, families, and our faculty. One in particular that I want to speak about is the awards and recognition ceremony. This is something that we are really taking this opportunity to rebuild. And so on Wednesday, May the 5th, that evening, we are going to spend a special time with our students, their families, and our faculty and celebrate the academic accomplishments of both our students and our faculty. We'll have an academic address. We will award some special, uh, some special awards for our faculty. And then most importantly, we're going to recognize the accomplishments of our students in the School of Business Administration, in the School of Music, and the College of Arts and Sciences. And so I'm, I'm looking forward to doing that. It's going to be a largely virtual ceremony, uh, though some of us will be on a stage. There will be a live part to that. Um, but that'll be a special revision of the type of ceremony that we've done. And I think it's going to be something that's going to be uh, an extraordinary recognition of what our students accomplish here at Stetson. Julie, how about the graduation ceremonies that'll follow? Thanks, Noel. We are very excited about moving forward with the in-person ceremonies to celebrate celebrate our class of 2021. Um, this year, we are going to be outside, rain or shine, at the Spec Martin Memorial Stadium. Um, as you mentioned, the ceremonies are going to be split um, to maximize the size of each of our gatherings and also staggered to avoid the higher temperatures of the afternoon. So ceremony schedules are going to start on Friday, May 7th at 7 p.m. with our graduate ceremony for the College of Arts and Sciences and School of Business Administration. Saturday, May 8th at 9 a.m., we have the School of Music, Organizational Leadership, College of Arts and Sciences for the Natural Sciences Division. Later that day at 7 p.m., we have College of Arts and Sciences for the Arts, Humanities, Education, and Social Sciences Division. And then on Sunday, May 9th, Mother's Day at 9 a.m., we have the School of Business Administration. So a few things. Tickets are required for all of our ceremonies at no charge. Graduates have been provided up to six tickets for their families and friends. Due to COVID safety measures, we do not plan on distributing unclaimed tickets at this time. Um, information for how students can claim their tickets can be found on the commencement website. And the important thing is the deadline to claim tickets is uh, April 30th. COVID safety measures we have in place, all attendees will need to present their tickets at, their, at the gate, as well as go through bag check and have temperatures screened. Um, we're gonna require everyone to wear a mask through the throughout the ceremony, as well as sit physically distant from other families. Um, graduates and families sitting on the field will also be spaced six feet apart. During the ceremony, we have eliminated handshakes, master's degree hooding, and the traditional handing out of the padded folders. Those are going to be mailed to graduates with their diplomas two to three weeks following graduation. Um, we've also eliminated the, re re sorry, the receptions and gatherings following the ceremony and ask that all attendees avoid gathering in large groups, both around the stadium and on campus. Basically, overall, the main thing to remember is to remain diligent and respectful of everyone around you. A few quick notes uh, for reminders. Any guest requiring accessible seating for mobility or health concerns need to submit a request on the commencement website. We will be live streaming all of the ceremonies. Um, that link will also be on the commencement website. Guess what? The commencement website is the place to go. Um, and then one final plug. During this weekend, the Office of Two of, for the events office relies so heavily on our amazing faculty and staff support. So if anybody is interested in volunteering your time to support these events, please email us at events at stetson.edu. We really do recognize that uh, graduation, that commencement is a, an important event for our families, for our students. In fact, I have a son who is graduating uh, this semester as well. So I know specifically what I'm looking forward to seeing uh, in, in a graduation for him. And so I appreciate all the work that's gone into making this happen. It, it's not exactly as it has been before. Some aspects of that are good and some aspects of that uh, we'll miss, but I think that we're doing the the very most we can in a responsible and safe way for our students and families. So, Julie, thank you so much. Dr. Rolke. Great. Thank you all very much, and thank the audience for tolerating me coming popping in and out of these uh, sessions. 
Thank you. And you've been asking some very good questions on the chat. At this time, I'd like for folks, if they could, uh, panelists to please rejoin us uh, on this webinar. And let me also say, as a person that experienced his very first Stetson commencements uh, this December, they were beautiful. Even if they were done in a physically distant manner, uh, they were beautiful, they were intimate, families were happy, students were happy. Uh, it's a very important rite of passage and we're delighted that we're able to do that in person, even if it is a bit more restrictive uh, than what we might typically do. So it's, it's really wonderful. And I think frankly, it's an example of the creativity and innovation that Stetson has brought uh, to this uh, to this pandemic time. So huge kudos around to everyone for your collaboration and for your understanding and also for participating. Um, really very important uh, rite of passage that we want to do again well this spring. Uh, we have a whole series of questions, but I, I, I want to also just emphasize a few more things related to COVID, if I may, and then we'll go to the Q&A. Uh, first, uh, as Larry pointed out, and I, I may have indicated at the outset, some very good news is coming with regard to the vaccine rollout in the state of Florida. And that includes uh, the ability to, anybody over the age of 18 and over can register for a vaccine starting on April 5th. I'm also very pleased to report to this audience that I am getting my first vaccine on Friday, 5.30 p.m., Pfizer. I get my second one, April 16th, 5.30 p.m. And I encourage everyone in the community to do the same. Uh, it is really, uh, really quite remarkable what's happened scientifically uh, during this pandemic that this vaccine is now becoming more widely available to us. And it's a real game changer for higher education, the fact that this vaccine is now rolling out with some rapidity. So I um, certainly encourage uh, members of the Stetson University community uh, to do so. Uh, despite the uh, greater availability of vaccines, including for those over the age of 18, we are still working hard to work with our Department of Health partners, Advent Health, and also the independent, independent colleges and universities of Florida to make Stetson University available as a vaccine site. There are no promises for that and no guarantee for that, but we are working diligently to do that. We think that would be very valuable to our community and also not just those that are Stetson affiliated, uh, but those that are our neighbors in Deland. So we're still working on that, but we are pleased to report that the vaccines are rolling out with some rapidity uh, as we speak. So that's great. And again, it's been mentioned a number of times here. Uh, we st still are in the middle of this pandemic, and I'd be remiss if I didn't continue to emphasize the importance that we take important safety measures. Wash our hands regularly for at least 20 seconds and multiple times a day. Wear your masks, watch your distance, and watch your crowd size. W, 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 W. That's, that's why Stetson has been able to thrive during this very difficult environment because we have had such incredible compliance among all members of our community with those very simple and I think straightforward uh, mitigation efforts. So let's stay, let's stay diligent uh, on vigilant on those things. So thank you. The first question I have is on the academic uh, side. Noel, you earlier talked about, you know, our desire to be as much face-to-face -face instruction as possible and that we do have some accommodations for health uh, folks that might be in a health risk category et cetera, either students or faculty, et cetera. Would it be possible for students to be uh, online for some of their experience? I suspect the answer to that is yes, but not fully online. Is that correct? That is correct. Uh, for students who qualify, who request and qualify for a medical exemption, there is the opportunity to be fully online, uh, but that's gonna be a little bit tricky because uh, all of the availability um, for classes that you might have in person won't necessarily be there. We're going to have to work with you specifically to make sure that you get a schedule that's going to work both for you and, you and for your faculty. You know, with about 10% of the class total being online, there will be limited access to online classes for students who don't qualify for a medical exemption just because that's appropriate for the instructor or appropriate for the pedagogy and the outcomes of the class and so students when registration opens on April 5th which is a week later than initially planned but on April 5th registration opens there will be, there will be classes that are listed as online that you can register for um, but they will be limited and the seats in those class will be limited because we'll be saving some of those seats for students who do qualify later over the summer incoming etc for medical exemption right uh, I'll, I'll mention this again at the end of the chat, uh, end of the session uh, in one of our slides, but we are again encouraging all uh, Stetson community members to get vaccinated. And when you do get vaccinated, please do 
register yourself as having been a vaccinated person. Uh, I'll give you that information uh, at the end of this session because we do want to make sure that most of our community, if not all, are vaccinated as we move forward. So again, a strong encouragement uh, to get vaccinated. Uh, we have a question here about, uh, and Larry, this is for you, and you may not yet know the answer because this is a highly evolving context. But as we track those folks that are vaccinated, will housing assignments at all be impacted by, for instance, in a case of a double or triple, triple occupancy, about vaccinated students versus non-vaccinated students? You follow me? Sure. It's a great question. So uh, first, I would say we don't expect to have any triple uh, occupancy. So in looking at our uh, occupancy planning for the fall, it would be no lounges or triples. And so, uh, and we've even taken some smaller shared bed, shared two-person bedrooms offline. Um, so we don't expect, so uh, we don't expect to do assignments by who is and isn't vaccinated. Um, that is uh, a rapidly evolving as to who can uh, be vaccinated. Uh, students do have the ability to preference a roommate. So if you're an incoming student, um, you can, uh, and there's someone you want to be a roommate with, um, you can absolutely. Um, Put them down as a mutual roommate preference um, and if you're a continuing student uh, you can do that through the online self-selection process there was a question about what that means and so um, we do we have an online housing portal so the same place you would do your housing application um, if you're in the housing self-selection process you can go um, in there during your appointment time or later um, with you and your group or your roommate, uh, preferred roommate, and select which room, which bed you want in which building that is available at that time. And so um, it's a really uh, great opportunity, uh, just like uh, it, it's a different system, it'll look different, but just like you can select your class, you can select your uh, housing assignment. And so it's pretty unprecedented that we're able to open that up for incoming first year students. And we're excited to be able to offer that. Thank you very much, Larry. And there is a link in the chat uh, for residential living and learning at Stetson, which could be helpful to audience members. Um, and perhaps, Larry, you might be able to fill us in also on uh, building on Ray Nault and Mitchell Redditch's uh, presentation on summer opportunities. Can you talk just a bit about summer housing availability for those students that wish to participate? Absolutely. Summer? So uh, our summer school housing is in the University Village Apartments every year. And so um, that is a, uh, an apartment community that's typically uh, upperclassmen, upperclass students. So um, it is a unique opportunity to live there. They're all individual bedrooms. Uh, they're typically four uh, bedrooms to an apartment. Um, there's a clubhouse there, the University Village Apartments clubhouse. And so um, we host events, uh, social activities, all those things are are right there where you're living. And so typically we have between 85 and 120 students living on campus during the summer. We did last summer. Uh, we never we never closed. Uh, we never closed at all uh, in uh, residential living and learning. We're open 365 days a year. Um, incoming students can live on campus during the summer if you're taking summer school classes. I will say one of the important things to know is because the summer school sessions overlap with one another, you could be taking classes in multiple sessions. Um, we do our housing for the summer based on the weeks that you're going to be here. And so uh, it's a very reduced rate of $145 a week. So if you're here for three weeks, that's three times 145. If you're here for 10 weeks, uh, we just do that by week and that's billed to your student account. Um, those have full, uh, our kitchens with full apartments. And so, um, you'll be able to cook all your meals there uh, or eat out. Um, and so uh, meal plans aren't available during the summer, uh, but uh, students uh, who live on campus uh, are in that community during the summer. So it's a, a great op opportunity. Great, thank you very much, Larry. And um, there's another question here, which I think I can tackle and it's a good one, which is are there circumstances under which Stetson's best laid plans might have to be uh, changed, right? Because this is a highly evolving context. And I guess I'll answer this question the way I did in the fall uh, when we were smack dab in the middle of this thing, was that we're going to watch carefully all the data and all of the public health expert advice that comes out uh, on a very regular basis. Uh, the concerns we had in the early fall, as you can might imagine, were high positivity rates, 
they were uh, low hospital bed availability. We worked very, very closely with our local health partners to assure that if a student did get sick, that they'd have the ability to get medical care immediately. Uh, we were very fortunate that that was the case in the fall, even when positivity rates were higher in our region. So we will watch as we have throughout. Safer Stetson Task Force has done an extraordinary job monitoring public health data. We have engaged experts in epidemiology and in public health throughout. We will continue to do that uh, in the spring uh, and fall semester as well. Uh, and so we will continue to monitor this very, very carefully. I've also learned as a person that's coming from the Northeast that Stetson University has in the past been the recipient of hurricanes. Uh, those things can, in fact, uh, alter your best laid plans. We've been fortunate this past year where we did not uh, suffer uh, from hurricane season. Uh, other parts of the, of, of the country certainly did. We did, however, have a tornado. We had a tornado that touched down in Deland, and I don't want to uh, make anybody scared. That's a, not a common occurrence in Deland. But of course, in other words, what I'm trying to articulate to the audience and to our panelists is that Stetson has proven its ability to be nimble. Uh, we, we proved that uh, last March when we were forced to go virtually because of the public health data that were available to us at that time. We have been slowly but surely moving through our tier system uh, to make sure that we can engage in a campus that is vibrant as best as we possibly can. Uh, so we're going to be nimble uh, as we move forward. Okay, so that's the answer to that. And I think I've answered, uh, we have answered all the questions in the chat. If we have not, please feel free to email us again and we will uh, try to answer them individually as best we can. I do want to part uh, today uh, with a, just a few more remarks about the context uh, within which we live. And I'm drawing a little bit from my remarks at what was a very powerful COVID remembrance uh, webinar that we had for our community uh, a week or so ago when we were uh, identifying uh, exactly a year when we were forced to go virtual uh, at Stetson University. And uh, this is not to point out uh, in any way uh, uh, sort of a horror show with regard to what's happening in our world, but rather to actually acknowledge the very challenging times that we have in our world that go just beyond, go beyond COVID and a global pandemic. So since we turned the calendar from 2020 to 2021, uh, we have experienced an Indonesian earthquake in January, also a Rohingya refugee crisis, also in January of 2021, a humanitarian crisis in Yemen, in February of 21, winter storms that rocked the middle of the United States in February of 2021, Venezuelan humanitarian and refugee crisis, also in February, beginning of February of 2021. Uh, there's been considerable civil unrest in the United States really for over a full year, if not more, uh, that have created a socio-political context in which difficult conversations must occur. And of course, as we know, COVID, we are still in the middle of this, uh, with uh, over 2.7 million deaths worldwide, uh, over 545,000 deaths in the United States, and over 33,000 deaths right here in Florida. Uh, let us recognize and honor those that have struggled through all of these crises. And what I said a week and a half ago, I'd like to repeat here, and I really believe it, and I know it's shared by members of the Stetson University community, both here in DeLand and at the College of Law in Gulfport, there is no better place to be than in higher education more broadly or at Stetson University more specifically when the world is confronting challenges like these. And the reason I believe that, and I believe it firmly, is because we are a community that cares for each other. We're a community that has a lot of really smart and insightful people within it. And what better place to be than in higher education more broadly than in, and we're in Stetson University more specifically when we are confronted with the kind of global challenges that we are confronted with today. We can study these things with an interdisciplinary focus and lens. We can apply what it is we're learning in the classroom to real world problems. That to me is profoundly exciting and makes me really reaffirm for you why it is such an honor and privilege to be serving as your 10th president at Stetson University. Please stay safe, please stay well, please keep your questions coming. And as I always conclude, go, Hatters!